Sat Nam, everyone. It's Candace from Soulfire Social, and this is part two in my series, Kunda What? Because this is the question I received the most when I moved back to the States from London, bringing Kundalini with me, coming in with my white robe and my turban, carrying my gong, because people weren't as familiar with Kundalini Yoga. But it's such an amazing practice for this day and age, not only helping you to strengthen your body through the asana practice, but to work on developing a neutral mind, which can help you to be less reactive and deal with all of the stresses and challenges and information that we're facing. It also helps you to ignite the mind-body-soul connection so you can drop into your heart space, making decisions from a place of truth, but also connecting up and enhancing your spirit practice. Um, so what I wanted to do with the series was take questions and demystify. Make sure that people feel comfortable coming to a Kundalini Yoga class and understanding what it is that we're doing. So today's question comes from Jackie Kissenfenig in Harpenden in the UK. Now she's a very good friend of mine and she's practiced with me, but she says, you know, sometimes not sure if I'm doing the breath of fire correctly and why do we use it so much in Kundalini Yoga? In Vinyasa, it's called called Kapala Bhati breath. And you'll find you might do it for 30 seconds or a minute, but you would never basically, except in Kundalini, do it for minutes at a time and through various different um, asanas or postures. And we do that quite often. So why? First, I'm gonna run you through the multitude of positive impacts a breath of fire has, because it'll make you want to do it a little bit more the next time someone calls it rather than groaning a little bit. Releases toxins in the lungs, mucus, and in the blood. It expands your lung capacity and enhances your vital strength. Strengthens the nervous system and helps you to resist the impact of stress. Repairs and balances the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Strengthens the very important navel chakra. So think about that. This is yellow, navel solar plexus, your center of confidence and strength, your willpower, your I am. So we power this up as we're pumping the navel and you can visualize it like building fire in the belly and then spreading that throughout your energetic system. So quite powerful there. You're also over oxygenating the blood. Bringing oxygen to the brain helps you to be uh, a little bit more focused, mental clarity. Boosting immune, immune system and also can decrease the impulse for drugs, alcohol, smoking, overeating. So definitely a good one to remember on that side. And it also says that it can help to burn off negative karma. So that's a lot of positivity that's coming from this breath. How do we do it properly? The key is to not, first of all, get stressed. You'll find people scrunching up their faces and you get really tense. We're not going to do that. So start off, just get an easy pose, straighten the spine, engage your jaw and darabanda, gentle tilt in the neck. Now let's put our left hand on our belly, right hand comes up, and the index finger is out, go ahead and put it under your nose. Because what we do with our breath of fire is it's an equal inhale and exhale out of the nose, but just focus on the exhale. The inhale will happen naturally. And as we exhale, the navel pumps in back towards the spine, diaphragm pushes up because we're pumping our belly as we're doing this, creating fire in the belly. Okay, so holding on down here, and then it's like you're pushing a bug, you've got a bug in your nose and you're pushing that out. Now my face got a little squished up. I'm gonna try and relax my face, relax my body. So it's just in and out, in and out, in and out. And I'm just focused on the exhale and my belly is pumping in on the exhale. Make sure you have that flow right. relax into it. You can start off slow and build up the power and strength of your breath of fire. Now, just a note, if you're on the first couple of days of your menstruation, if you're pregnant, or if you're just feeling tired, do a long, deep breath, okay? So you don't need to be doing a strong breath of fire. It's very you know, powerful, all these muscles in the belly. So take that into consideration whenever you're being called to do that. 
You may do a breath of fire through the mouth, but that's going to be a very specific call that your teacher is going to give you. So if you want to practice this, let's go ahead, sitting in easy pose, opening, let's put the hands into Gyan Modra, just relax down, your palms are facing up, thumb and index finger are touching. My eyes are closed and I'm focusing on the third eye point. This is going to help you to be a little bit more relaxed and relax the jaw, relax the tongue into the soft palate. Okay, and let's go ahead. We'll do one minute breath of fire. <laughs> Try and visualize that you are pumping fire at the navel. The color is yellow and you're creating a tremendous amount of energy and fire in that very important energetic center and starting to send it through the body in a wave. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Hold the breath, maybe a gentle pull on your mula bandha, that's anus, sex organs, up and in, navel back towards the spine. I want you to visualize that you're taking all of that beautiful fire. You're igniting the kundalini energy in the second and third vertebrae, and we're using that to power up and shift through energetic and physical blocks. Bring it up to your third eye. Remember, face should be relaxed. Just smile as you do this. Maybe notice if there's a color at your third eye. And then release like a waterfall, the breath, the lock. You can practice this to build up your strength one, two, three minutes. And the next time someone in your class, you know, calls a breath of fire, you'll know exactly what to do and just how powerful it is. Now, if you have any other questions, I know um, I'm coming back to you soon on all of the reasons why. I wear a turban when I teach and why wearing a head covering might be an interesting option for you if you're starting to do a lot more meditation. It's at least worth a try. I find it incredibly powerful. I'm also going to demystify the sheepskin. Why do we sit on a sheepskin or on a natural fiber or cloth? If you have any other questions, I invite you to message me directly. Thank you, Jackie, for asking about Breath of Fire. Happy to, um, yeah, to demystify this Kundalini Yoga. It's magical, and I'm really happy to share. Have a beautiful day. Sat Nam.